The last 10 years of my life have passed by like a dream. Highs and lows in vivid color ranging from black and white to a myriad of lush hues that stream across the layers of my subconscious. I cannot say how this dream will end, only where it began, and how uncertain the future is that awaits. This is my story, my husband's story, my children's story. This is Kenneth's story, the story of his life and his progress. Kenneth's journey to recovery. Watching my son play today, it's hard to believe where he was just a few short years ago. <coughs> Kenneth was diagnosed with autism at the age of two. He had just learned to walk. He had no words or gestures. He was severely delayed in all aspects of his life. The doctors gave us no hope. Even at six years old, he was so tiny, oh my God, his little legs, no bigger than a spindle in his arms. Um, I'd say he was probably three, three and a half year old size. And I thought to myself, my God, will he ever grow? And his speech, there was none, I mean, none that I could understand. It was like a two year old. Maybe. <laughs> you going to school? You gonna go to school? And he what, he do? what we would ask him to do, which is the term of echolalia. Hands? Kenny. What? How much do you weigh? Right? How much does your belt weigh? Belt weigh. How? 37. But he would repeat what you asked him to do and then just sit there. And so we would hand over hand, show him what we were asking him to do. Walk. What do you want? Walk. Walk. You know, so we would have signs for it's work time or it's play time, and he didn't know the difference. So we would physically take him and show him that he could play now. Um, he had a one-on-one -on -one the whole time he was here, so they would mostly do one-on-one -on -one things with him and show him how, even if it was snack time, he he wouldn't know enough to come over to the table, even all, all the children were sitting. He wouldn't know enough to come over to the table until somebody physically said, come on, we're going to go over here and sit down and eat. And there was very little that he had mastered. It was, we would constantly put, this is ongoing, you know, we would have his IEP. Over a course of the year, he didn't master. He didn't master hardly anything. It was obvious that Ken was not a typical five-year-old. You're not taking Gwen, photos, right? Gwen, February, March. We just, Gwen. we just sat there with a blank stare because it was too much for him. Our curriculum is too advanced. And like I said, the rest of the children are writing, writing their name, reading. Uh, they're all potty trained. And like I said before, he was five and still on diapers. Oh, I would say Kenneth, and he would smile and look at me, but I wouldn't get it, no, he wouldn't talk back. All I would get smiles. He could not do what the other kids could do at his age. You can say, Kenneth, go stand in line. He wouldn't know what I was saying. What, could he, could he talk at all? Could he, could he talk no. to the other kids? No, he didn't even play with the other kids. What, he just stood there? Mm-hmm. Like... Couldn't hold a crayon, couldn't hold a pencil. He was still in diapers at the age of five. He didn't even know how to hold a pencil or a crayon. He didn't know what they were for. And if we handed him a piece of paper, 
or set the paper on the table and it landed on top of the crayon, he wouldn't even bother to look for the crayon. He didn't know enough to. Somebody would have to literally hand over hand put the crayon in his hand. Before stem cells, Kenny's speech wasn't there. You could barely understand anything he said. Hardy was basically the only one that could understand him. And he parroted everything you said. He was just saying what you said. And it wasn't very clear. He's angry. He would throw things. He would climb on top of things and scream. He'd scream a lot. For a seven-year-old, I, you know, for from the time he was probably four to like seven, that it was almost scary to be around him alone. I didn't think he, there would be much of a future. I remember when people told my Aunt Marty that he should be institutionalized. And honestly, I know a piece of me thought that it would probably be the best thing for them because he was so out of control. And they had two other children that they had to see about. And all of their time was being absorbed into Kenny, and there was no way to control him. He was out of control. By the time Kenneth was eight, he still could not carry on a conversation or answer simple questions. He was not potty trained, and he still wore a diaper. At six, he had the vocabulary of a two-year-old. He was still in diapers at eight years old. When we saw a story on the internet about a boy who was autistic and the drastic improvements he had experienced from treatment at the Stem Cell Institute with cord blood stem cells, we knew that it was something that we had to research. I mean, the, the, the treatment is scheduled, the, the cells are scheduled to be uh, finished, you know, processing, you know, for the treatment while the patient is already here. So we are sure ourselves that the patient is already here when the cells are ready so to be injected. So the delay is minimal. So, so that's why we do it as scheduling, you know, so that the cells are ready when the patient is already here. Is it cream? No, it's a little bit cold. Is it hole in it? be kept alive. This is awesome. Will they start growing right away or it takes a couple days at least to start attaching and growing, doesn't it? Well, they within they should arrive, you know, to the target areas within twenty four hours, but the cells uh, as you may know they're they're active so they continue to multiply, you know. And once they are in the body, they continue to multiply, up to a point, of course. A simple way to understand this therapy is that it does much the same things as mild hyperbaric oxygen therapy, but at a much faster rate. The stem cells go into the body, find the damaged areas, and begin to form new working blood vessels that carry oxygen and rejuvenate the damaged tissues. It's hot? No, it doesn't hurt. It's cold, right? The beautiful thing about stem cell therapy is that we don't need to uh, match it, you know, because the stem cells who are potential cells, they lack uh, the markers on their surface, you know, that would mark them, you know, as of a specific blood type or a specific group or a specific tissue. So since they don't have that, there's no need to match it, you know like you would do if you were going to receive a blood transfusion 
all those cells are already differentiated, you know, like one say like a grown up cells. Mm -hmm. So those have uh, the typing, the markers and all that. So that you would need to match. But this one, since they're essentially blank slates, we don't need to match it. Oh. What do you get the blood for? We draw it to get the patient's serum, which uh, has, you know, the proteins, nutrients, you know, and all that the cells need to be kept alive and happy. So we mix the, during the preparation of the stem cells, uh, which we prepare, you know, each day for, for treatment. We mix the, the cells, I mean, we suspend the cells in uh, the patient's serum so that the cells can be kept, you know, happy and alive until they are injected into the patient. Mm. So, so that's they the reason. feed or they thrive in that environment? Yes, because uh, we have seen that uh, mixing them with the patient serum is much better, much, much better than just uh, put it in either a saline solution, which has no nutrients at all, or in the glucose solution, mm. which has sugar, yes, but it lacks the other nutrients that the stem cells, that cells need. Mm. As you know, stem cells, they are, by their very nature, they are very active cells, you know. Mm. So they, they need a, a lot of uh, nutrition, you know, to keep going. Mm -hmm. And the uh, patient serum provides that. Mm -hmm. And we use the patient's own serum since we, we know that it won't cause any allergic reaction or any rejection or anything like that because he's getting his own serum back. Right. Right. So that's what we, we need to uh, to on the first day. Uh -huh. The stem cell infusion was a huge success. After the stem cell treatment, Ken started reading. He had more cognition, more abstract thinking. He started talking about past events and people who had died. He started praying to God to help him when he was out of control. He knows his birthday, what day of the week it is, what the date is, what time it is. He had better sentence structure, clearer speech. He started doing math problems, addition. He can write simple sentences, more awareness, more conversational speech. And finally, Kenneth potty trained. I remember when they came home from the first stem cell treatment and Kenny could sit down and read a book. And that blew me away to see him sit down on a couch and read. It was amazing. Michael wanted to ask the water a question. I'm going to be in a spelling bee. Michael says, what would you do if you were in a spelling bee? I would spell for the water. Michael looked at his shoes. We saw immediate what results of his speech. We saw immediate results of his reading yeah. ability. Using the potty. And so wrap. Okay. Like root beer. And how are you gonna get them? I pay for them. I want to get twenty six dollars. Well, what do you have? Let me see, put it on the table. Twenty-five dollars. Great. Let's go. There. Now. It's not diet, so just me look for some steps. Then I pay for my own. What did you get? Okay. Yeah. Can I do it for you? <laughs> okay. Give me one step. There you go. Yes. Should I get back? Yes. yes. You have to address the issues when 
when the when the kid is small, when the child is small, and so we give them a chance to grow. The growth factors are huge when he's small, and if you don't have intervention when he's young, then they're less likely to make a difference. Where's New York? Me. Okay. What do I owe you, sir? Fifteen dollars. Wait, sixteen? What'd you say? Fifteen. Here we go. <clears throat> There's your rent. Five ten. Okay, go ahead, roll the die. Before you spend. Four, five, back. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. You already have Vermont? Where are your, where are your cards? My gosh, they're hidden them under all this money. Are these the new cards? Which cards? Not ours, though. What is it under? As winter gives way to spring, and the snow melts, making room for new life, like the melting snow, the lines of my memory have faded, being replaced with new hope and the new life to follow. I don't remember the past so much anymore, just the beautiful future that awaits us in Ken's journey to recovery.